Chapter 41 Bargaining You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Adrian woke up early in the morning and massaged his legs and tried to move his legs. He did this every morning and has found little but stacking success. At first he could only twitch his legs but now he could move his legs a little bit though not much that he could walk by himself. Today was his follow-up checkup and his parents would drive him to the doctors today but today was also the day he would tell his parents of his plans. Since he was going to have breakfast with them anyway, he would tell them his grand plan, not really that the plan was just telling them to lift the 8-hour ban so that he could access the game for 12 hours every day. Due to the health issues and time aberration of the game, the world health experts gave a strict warning to only allow access to a game a maximum of 12 hours a day. Although Atlas Incorporated argued that 15 hours would still be fine for the average user, the health experts have stood their stance because that was the average for the past virtual reality games that was made and Pandemonium is no exception. Atlas Incorporated conceded to the rule so that they could launch Pandemonium and even with the log in time restriction, Pandemonium still thrived. Adrian hopped in his hovering wheelchair and floated towards the dining area. He really thanked the one who invented this special wheelchair and decided to price it in an affordable price. When Adrian arrived in the table, the table was already full of breakfast food and rice. Rice is life which is Adrian's motto. The family started eating and was well on enjoying the food when Adrian started the conversation. Dad, you are looking very dashing today. Adrian said with a serious poker face while looking at his dad and because of what he said his dad abruptly stared at Adrian. Adrian looked at his mother with the same poker face and spoke. Mom, you are very beautiful today. Dot when Adrian said those words both his parents stared at him and they were not able to take another bite while Adrian showed a bright smile. Both his parents put down their eating utensils and spoke at the same time. No, but I haven't even told you what it is yet, Adrian protested. If it's about money definitely no and if it's about something else it is still no. His mom said. Wow, she is like a psychic. Scary. Adrian thought. Adrian then told them his plan. I was just thinking maybe you could lift my gaming hour limitation. Adrian said with puppy dog eyes. We are listening, both his parents exclaimed. I was wondering if you could let me play the game for the maximum hours that can be played and in exchange I would pay for the game pod expenses. Please. Adrian said with a large smile. His parents looked at each other and they may have reached an agreement through I language. His dad was the one who spoke first. We will hear what the doctor's opinion is first before we will make a decision, his dad assured. After breakfast they departed for the clinic. Equals 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 in what could be called a city in pandemonium, various guild leaders of different factions have all met. Inside a secret room in a pub where no other people could have access unless they spoke a special password, there stood three guild leaders of different factions and their respective vice guild leaders gathered to talk about certain issues. These three top guilds have been present in other games and even now they dominate Boundless because their core group members are what you could call professional gamers. The first guild master is a woman who chose an elf as a starting race. She has green hair and emerald eyes. She was very beautiful and is also known as a cold beauty because she does not show much emotion to other people even in broadcasts about the expeditions about their guild. She is the guild master for the guild Evergreen, Anastasia. She is wearing priest robes that are white with gold embroidery and a design of Yggdrasil of the Tree of Life. She is currently an oracle in the Church of Life. An oracle is one of the second job advancement paths for a priest that is difficult to obtain because oracles must hear the voice of the god they serve to become one. Beside her is one of her vice guild masters, Mariposa the Insectomancer. She also chose the elf race but her hair is brown in color and her eye color is blue. She is wearing a kimono that has the aesthetic of a butterfly wings and has a hairpin that has a gorgeous butterfly adorning it. The second guild master is a man that could be said to be in his thirties and has bulging muscles. 
He has red hair and brown eyes and has this aura that tells you to back off. He is the guild master for Infernum, Siegfried. His class is said to be Great Swordsman which is a variation of the second class swordsman for the warrior character because they deal with heavy weapons and heavy armor. He is wearing red colored heavy armor that probably undergo a visual change by paying a few amount of gold coins. His personality is more of a muscle head with great charisma. Beside him is the brain of the Infernum Guild, the Vice Guild Master Faust. He has grayish silver hair and is wearing a monocle. He has black eyes that feels as if his gaze pierces through your soul. He is wearing red robes indicating that he is a pyromancer. A mage second job class advancement that mainly focuses on fire magic. The third guild master is a man in his early twenties and has looks that could rival a model. He has azure hair and bright golden eyes and a chiseled jaw with a body that could be said as sculpted by God himself. His name is Ein. He wore a blue martial artist's outfit like that of an anime character that was sleeveless so his well-toned arms can be seen. He also has bandages wrapping his hands which is the indicator for a martial artist class a second job advancement for the warrior and has the motto of, the body itself is a weapon. Beside him is his vice guild leader who is a woman with big body proportions appropriate for a woman. She has black hair and a mole near her lower lip on the left side. She has a jolly elder sister personality and her eyes are in crescents but she occasionally opens them to reveal her brown eyes. Her name is Aisha. She is wearing light armor and is famed for being a hunter which is a second job advancement for the ranger class and is famed for the use of traps with the use of archery and a short sword. The two are the higher ups of the guild valor. They were here to discuss the thing about the player who acquired a unique class. According to the spies they have planted, the three guilds have not recruited the player mentioned in the news and world message. Siegfried then abruptly spoke in a powerful tone, let's not pretend we do not know why we are here, I would just say that whoever finds the player of the world message will have the rights to recruit him first. Anastasia then Anwared, I agree with what the Infernum Guild Master said. It must be first come first serve and that the guild who finds him first must not bother the recruit for two days after speaking to one guild. Confident as always Evergreen Guild Master. As if you would find the player in question first, rebutted Ein. Anastasia just scoffed at what Ein said and spoke no more. Faust then spoke his suggestion. What about whoever finds the player first would have speaking rights first without any plots to discredit the first guild who finds the player and the rest would have a chance to speak to the player after a day, Faust suggested. The guild masters all nodded the suggestion of Faust. Aisha then interjected. What would happen if the player turned down our offers? Siegfried then spoke that he would accept the player's decision and not bother the player. The guild master for Evergreen and Valor also shared the same sentiment as the Infernum's guild master. It was not good to pressure a person who did not want to be in an organization. They also agreed that if they find the player they would only share it in their social circle and not anywhere else. Who knows if a top guild candidate might suddenly snatch the player but they are not still worried because they are pros after all. Meanwhile the player in question is not even logged in into the game but instead is headed to his doctor's appointment. Chapter 42 Good news and the third summon you are listening at novelfull.audio Adrian, family reached the clinic. It was a medium-sized one and is most famous for helping athletes get back to top shape when they experienced an injury. The doctor here is also famed for helping young people when they experienced accidents. This was also where Adrian's parents bought the wheelchair from since the one who invented it was once a patient of the doctor of this clinic when the doctor was still a bit young. The patients of this clinic call the doctor, Dr. Happy because he is always has a smile and always encourages his patients which is why his family is very proud of him. Good morning Dr. Happy. We are here for Adrian's appointment. Adrian's mother said. You are just in time. Please escort him so that we could scan his brain activity and we will see from there, Dr. Happy said while smiling. 
Adrian likes Dr. Happy very much because he was one of the reasons that he managed to persuade his parents in buying him a game pod even though it was the game pod with the lowest possible assimilation rate of 90%. Game pods that have 99% assimilation rate are very pricey and is mainly used by the high rankers because of the steep price point. Adrian also dreams to own one of these game pods but he should focus on his current goal in increasing his in-game time and try to be independent in his game time per se. Due to the advancement of technology, it was now easier to conduct brain scans more effectively and harmlessly which is the reason sicknesses in the brain that are previously undiagnosed and cannot be treated are now easily treated. Dr. Happy then proceeded to tell Adrian's parents the news of the tests after Adrian has relaxed a bit and returned to his parents' side. Although they know that Adrian is in good condition, parents always worry about their child regardless if the child was already an adult which is why Adrian's parents have worry plastered in their face. You do not have to worry and breathe a sigh of relief. According to Adrian's brain scan, his brain is now returning back to normal. It seems him playing the game of pandemonium has sparked or ignited the parts of his brain to drive itself. It has been proven that games not only increases the child's cognitive ability but also serves as an exercise for the brain of sorts. Still, everything good must come in moderation but I believe that the game therapy is proving rather potent because results like these usually come by the third session. If this continues it would only be a month before Adrian could fully walk again. I recommend Adrian now start practicing to walk at least for one hour each day to further increase his recovery time but do not strain him if it proves difficult it is good to rest and try another day. Dr. Happy said with a calm tone full of optimism. Adrian and his family returned back home and his father installed the handrail that would serve as Adrian's guide to walk. Still Adrian turned his wheelchair and faced them. So. What is the verdict? Adrian asked with optimism because Dr. Happy's speech made him even more glad. His parents once again looked at each other before his father spoke. It seems they finally reached a conclusion. We will allow you to play for 12 hours a day but you must at least leave the game pod every 4 hours and not skip meals. Health is very important especially in you case. We have already opened a bank account in your name and will be accessible through your Halo's watch which you just need to log in this account," his father said while handing him a note. His mother continued, but of course this will not be permanent if you break your promise and become irresponsible we would return back to the status quo. Adrian Holdot heartedly agreed and thanked his parents and urged them to hug him because he cannot initiate it himself. He told them he would be in his room and if they need something just send it to his Halo's watch. Adrian inserted his Halo's watch into his game pod and activated his bank account and directly converted 200 of his gold coins to cash which is now in the price of $1.5 a coin. Adrian earned $300 in his bank just like that. He hopes everything would go smoothly. Adrian now logged back to the game. Adrian appeared back in the Paradox Plains and Reed summoned his soulbounds. Just wait guys we would have a new companion joining us. Adrian said while he pulled the random epic soul stone in his inventory. Item. Random epic soul stone description. Activating this stone will generate a soul stone of a random creature from pandemonium's various worlds. Epic soul stones only assures that the creature would have to at most two evolutions. Adrian's eye widened because of the realization. It seems that common and uncommon creatures can have one evolution and some rare creatures that can evolve twice. Epic creatures could evolve twice. Legendary creatures could probably evolve up to the ultimate evolution but would probably take a lot of evolution material to do. Mythical and the rumored transcendent tier creature could achieve ultimate evolution. There may be more about creature evolution than meets the eye. There are a sub-job that is famous for raising pets which is called breeders. Breeders not only take care of your pets or soulbounds for a certain amount of time but they can also breed certain pets together. Just before Adrian triggered the random epic soul stone, he remembered something that could help him have a stronger soulbound. Item. Upgrade stone tier. Mythical effect. Upgrades the tier of any item to the tier of this stone. Consumable. 
Description A strange black stone that is said to have come from the world of the gods and was said to be bestowed by the goddess of magic to the people to strengthen the items that is present in the mortal realm. Adrian was planning on using it on one of his items but decided that a soulbound would have a better investment than an item. This was a reward he got from the twin gods which means he would get greater rewards further in the quest. Line. Adrian did not hesitate to use the upgrade stone and he was sure he will not regret it by the description of the new item. Item Random Mythical Soul Stone Tier Mythical Description Activating this stone will generate a soul stone of a random creature from Pandemonium's various worlds. Mythical soul stones assures that the creature would have its ultimate evolution. Do you want to use the random mythical soul stone, yes or no, as the stone hovered in the air and twirled, Adrian was praying to Arensus that he would get a tank type creature or a support creature. A healer would not be bad. After a few seconds he finally heard a system prompt. Player Equinox has acquired Albino Magpie, Ceramanic Strain, Soul Stone, after he heard the notification, Adrian the viewed the Soul Stone's description. Item Albino Magpie, Ceramanic Strain, Dot Tier Mythical Description A magpie that was transformed by the peculiarities of its bloodline. Able to use healing magic that is said that only saints could use. Adrian was very thankful that he got a healer but he would not mind a tanker but nevertheless he was very happy. What do you expect from a gamer who is also a teenager? As soon as he was finished reading the item description, he started drawing the summoning circle to revive the creature. He placed the soul stone at the middle of the magic circle and started to chant. Like that of the sun rises on the east and sets on the west. The life of one is equivalent to one. I call upon the soul of this valiant creature to serve me and become my herald. I, Equinox, call upon you to this mortal realm to protect me and I promise to protect you. I enter this contract with you not as a master but as an equal. Adrian said this chant with clear embarrassment because it is like something a Chinibu would chant. As soon as the chant was spoken, an unidentified bird's cry was heard throughout the paradox planes that shook the soul of each inhabitant. Askeler heard the cry and muttered, it must be that energetic twerp again. From the magic circle, a cute little magpie appeared contrary to the soul-shaking monster cry that everyone has heard. The magpie is bit big compared to magpies on earth as its standing height is 5 inches. It has white feathers and black beady eyes. Its cuteness could melt the heart of a tyrant. When the magpie saw Adrian it chirped with joy and perched itself in his shoulders. Sirius and Canlayan looked jealous of the magpie with the magpie puffing its chest out as if it won something. Adrian found the interaction hilarious and patted the head of his soulbounds when the system prompt was heard. Please give a name to your albino magpie soulbound, Sina, Adrian proudly said. You would be called Sina, as he cradled his new companion. Chapter 43 Proving the Theory of Evolution You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Adrian was happy that he has now a summon that has a sustaining ability. He hurriedly checked the abilities that Sina has to offer and was a bit underwhelmed. Skill Breath of the Magpie Effect Heals 0.2% HP of a target per second. This is considered its basic attack. Cooldown None skill. Light of hope effect. Heals party members by 5% of their health. Cooldown. One minute skill. Aura of brilliance effect. Passively increases the party members HP and MP regeneration by 100%. Adrian was a bit disappointed because it was a mythical summon but he understands that the cute magpie is still low leveled. He also noticed that there was no infant tag near the magpie's name which means that creatures summoned using the soul retrieving circle are in adult form already. He checked Sina's status card. Name. Sina species. Albino magpie, ceramic strain, LVL 1 HP.75 slash 75 EXP 0% per 100% skills. Active skills, expand, passive skills, expand. Evolution. 
Possible Adrian was curious on the possible evolution of Sina since she was already a mythical summon she must have a direct path towards a mythical evolution and he was not disappointed. Evolution Caladrius, Ceramanic Strain, Evolution Requirements A. Heal 100,000 damage B. Heal sickness of other people. 100 C. Level 50 Wow. Just Wow. An evolution that needs to heal other beings to achieve it. Adrian was also surprised it was not a Ceramanic evolution which could mean that the Ceramanic would be his ultimate evolution. Adrian was excited because he has a soul bound that has a clear path to ultimate evolution and he would just need to grind the requirements. Now he felt nervous for his other two soul bounds because they did not have a clear path which means Adrian must find other ways for them to achieve evolution. He did not want to extract his soul bounds like other summoners because they were inferior. Adrian believed that in this game the possibilities could be endless and he already had a glimpse of an upgrade stone which means he could potentially find other clues that could increase serious potential or maybe he could ask Pan but that was for another date. Adrian also looked at Sirius and Canlayan's evolutions. Evolution Ortho's evolution requirements A. Must be in an underworld realm B. Acquire lightning dog species Soulstone Adrian was not happy with Sirius' evolution path because an Orthos was a rather common monster in the underworld that was level 200 at least. Some explorers managed to get to one of the underworlds mainly hell before getting wiped by an Orthos at the beginning part of hell. Adrian wants Sirius to maintain his wolf-like traits not because he looks cool that way no. Adrian read in books that an Orthos two heads often hate each other and he does not want a self-destructive soul bound. He would withheld Sirius evolution for the time being until he finds a way for him to deviate from his normal evolution path. Evolution Fire Dragon King Evolution Requirements A. Must be level 300 B. Clear the trial of the Dragon King Adrian almost fainted because of the evolution requirements for Canlayan. Level 300 could only be acquired for about two years in game if he dedicated his time in leveling up maybe a year but Adrian has another way. His eye glinted which indicated that he has an idea. He remembered the fraudulent item he acquired. Item. Abyss Dragon Essence Tier. Mythical Description. The essence of one of the pinnacle species of water dragons that rules over water and its superior element ice. Effect. Adds qualities of the Abyss Dragon. Conditions. Dragon-type creatures or advanced blacksmith mastery. This item could be used as a material for blacksmithing or enhancing a dragon-type creature. When Adrian took the item out of his inventory, Canlayan shivered before going near Adrian and looking at him with eyes full of longing. Adrian chuckled because his 10-meter-long dragon was acting cute in front of him and he could not keep a straight face. He then nodded to Canlayan's wishes and he was astounded that Canlayan ate the Abyss Dragon Essence. Adrian imagined Canlayan using dragon magic or something to assimilate the essence or something cool to happen but I guess reality is different from expectations. Yet Adrian was jumping for joy because one of his expectations was made true. Evolution Frostfire Dragon Evolution Requirements A. Abyss Dragon Essence B. Level 75 Adrian's theory is now proven true that certain items could affect a creature's evolution. Thankfully his theory was proven true. Now, Adrian could see hope for Sirius and he is now fantasizing of creating the ultimate team and achieving each of his soulbound's ultimate forms being a pinnacle of their species. Adrian also looked at his current status screen. Name Equinox Race Deimos, Half Asmodian BVEC Species Imp, Lesser Demon, Title Champion of the Twin Gods, Dragon Tamer, Expand, Job Summoner, Omega Summoner Inheritance, LVL 17 EXP 0-100% HP, 1500-1500 MP 950 VIT 70 plus 5 STR, 75 plus 10 INT 75 plus 20 AGI 70 plus 10 DEX 70 plus 15 END 68 available stat points 
18 skills. Job skills, expand, active skills, expand, passive skills, expand, racial skill. Origin magic, expand, Adrian the proceeded to upgrade the Asmodian battle suit to rare quality since he has the leftover armors from the undeads that he could use and those armors were not usable for beings that are alive since the requirements for the armors was undead. Now the new armor was like this. Item. Asmodian battle uniform, growth type, character bound, tier. Rare effect. Physical damage reduction. 15% magical damage reduction. 15% HP plus 500 HP Regan plus 50% slots. 1. Empty 2. Empty 3. Empty conditions. Asmodian lineage the upgrade was okay since it unlocked a new trait and increased the damage reduction but one thing alarmed him and that is the look of the battle suit. The suit now showed his elbows. Adrian hoped that was the last change that happened to the whole look. Adrian put the thought aside for now and focused on his next important task and that was looking for a sub-job class. He was now past level 15 but have not acquired a sub-job class that Askler's quest told him to. He now walked towards the town and caught the attention of the other Deimos residents there because his group is very eye-catching. A dragon, a giant wolf, a cute white magpie and an imp whose hair is now half white with a crown floating above it and who looks like a noble because of his attire except for his feet because it was the default shoes. He needed to find a way for Canlayan and Sirius to obtain the polymorph spell so that they would not draw too much attention. He would ask Pan later if that was possible but first he needed to deal with the task at hand. A little attention never hurt anybody but the children did flock towards Sirius to touch him but was later collected by their parents. Adrian was looking at the various sub-job classes that are available in the Paradox Plains. Maybe he could stumble to a rare sub-class here because of the Deimos race inability to use elemental magic. He remembered Gianna because she was an alchemist although her behavior did not show it. She must have been at least a grandmaster alchemist to be able to sell complete recovery potions. Due to the game being lifelike even NPCs lose stock for potions which is why guilds have recruited alchemist players with great talent but Adrian wanted a sub-job class that also has an effect in battle. He did not want to be a blacksmith because the armor break passive is only applicable to weapons and his demi. Gauntlets does not have a damage indicator like all gloves. Gloves are only used to assist the summoner for magic and only enhances spells and not physical damage. Adrian's demi dot gauntlets were special because of the rune of explosive force. Adrian was walking and thinking at the same time which is why he was not aware that he already left the town vicinity and wandered to a place with few workshops and reached a place with a sign saying earn as the scribe. Adrian stopped walking and wondered what is a scribe. His interest was perked and he entered the shop. Inside the shop was a place full of books and talismans and there was even runestones. Adrian started getting a general idea of what a scribe can do and he was amazed because the words written on the papers and stones emanated an aura. Each inscription was unique and some have a calming effect while some are suffocating just standing next to it. Adrian hoped that a scribe was a sub-job class and not a mage's job advancement. He was walking with awe until he bumped into someone and he screamed. Ah. I am sorry. Ashoda. Adrian muttered. There was a visible bulge on the forehead of the person that Adrian bumped and a paper fan suddenly whacked Adrian's head. Chapter 44. Perks of being a scribe you are listening at novelfull.audio. Adrian was whacked in the head but it did not hurt much. It seems the paper fan produces loud sounds instead of it actually hurting a lot giving the illusion that it strikes deal great damage. Adrian then inspected the fan to make sure of its use. Weapon. Slapstick paper fan tier. Uncommon damage. 1-5 volume up enchantment. Sounds produced will be amplified by 10 times. Description. A paper fan that was enchanted by the master scribe Ernas. Used for comedic purposes. The only thing this fan can damage are small insects. 
Adrian chuckled when he read the description of the paper fan and he was whacked again which he then stared at the showed at the boy with dumbfounded eyes. Adrian's eyes were telling the words, why you hit me again. Before Adrian could mouth it though the boy opened his mouth and spoke. I felt like you were looking down on me that is why I hit you again but I am sure that you know the reason why I hit you the first time the boy said. I am sorry, Adrian said while he bowed. Now that Adrian has a good look at the boy, he noticed he was just like him an imp but has bigger horns and his skin tone is different. Now that Adrian could recall, other Deimos people have different skin tone maybe it is because of the persona. Askeler did say that the Asmodian lineage members could evolve, which is the reason why Askeler is only tinged with blue unlike Adrian who is blue. As Adrian was in his thought, Another person entered into the establishment with vigor and a joyful aura that burst Adrian out of his thinking bubble. Ernest.chan, your big sister is here. An alluring woman's voice said. Adrian and the boy looked towards the source of the voice and the boy paled. He wanted to run away but tripped in his own black robes. Adrian now has a better image of the woman when he picked up the boy and hugged him with his face suffocating from his bosom. The woman was none other than Gianna which means the boy's name was Erna's. Add that he was Erna's then that means he is the master scribe. You really should not just a book by its cover but still why is a master scribe in the form of a boy? Adrian thought. Erna's was struggling with breathing and trying his best to get rid of Gianna when she noticed Adrian. Oh dot high equinox. You did not tell me you were here. Why did you not stop by my shop if you were coming here? Gianna said with a cutesy pose. Before Adrian could answer, Erna's managed to break free from Gianna's grasp and whacked her with the paper fan like he did to Adrian. When Erna's did that Adrian now know what is actually the use for the paper fan. He does not know why Gianna is acting like that though. She is has a promiscuous personality but she also shows restraint which is actually shocking because she was an NPC. It was because of Gianna that Adrian is still amazed by the game because the NPCs have a lifelike personality. Um. I could step outside if you two are not finished with your business. Adrian said as he could see Gianna wanting to pounce on Erna's again. Seeing the awkward remark of Adrian, Erna's coughed and gave Gianna a look to behave which she did but had a pouty look on her face. Well then young man, what can I do for you as the owner of this establishment? Erna said with a proud smile on his face but lacking the dignity because of his cute look. Adrian could see Gianna struggling to control herself from pinching Erna's cheeks. You see. I am actually looking for a possible sub-job class and I just happened to stumble into your establishment because I was curious on what a scribe could do. Adrian spoke honestly. Ernest was happy that someone was actually interested in his profession but he did not show it in his face but maintained a stoic expression. Ernest the spoke in a bragging tone. If you must know, being a scribe is one of the most important of all jobs. It deals with fundamental building blocks of magic itself, Q echo sound effect. Ernest said while raising his hands up. He must think he looks cool but he only looks cute. If you are looking for a sub-job class, I would be happy to become your mentor. I would not mind a cute apprentice. Gianna said to Adrian while Erna's could be seen glaring at her. Adrian then spoke, I do not think alchemy is that helpful for me in battle and I can't really concoct potions when in battle. I need a sub-job that could assist me in battle because I want to go in adventures and traverse different worlds. When Adrian spoke those words, Ernas beamed with delight because he could actually help this young lad and he was not able to get an apprentice ever since their stay in the Paradox Plains. Ernas then spoke. If you insist on usefulness in battle then I suggest being a scribe. A scribe can increase the effectiveness of magic because we understand archaic knowledge that no one but us can comprehend. You being a summoner as I can see you summons outside must know that having magic assists you in battle. Also, as you can see from my workplace, scribes not only increases magic's effectiveness but creates talismans for offense, defense and utility but also could enchant items unlike enchanters that rely on the elements to give power to items. 
Adrian's ears perked up and Ernas could see the attention Adrian was giving him. Gianna found their interaction cute and bid farewell to both of them and told Adrian to come by her shop before he goes on adventures. Ernas told her not to bother him again but Gianna just shrugged his remark. Ernas also told Adrian that being a scribe not only increases magic effectiveness but could also give the magic spell new power that it does not possess normally. Being a scribe was a noble job back when people were exploring magic because scribes were the record holders and researchers at that time but they were also the first to be targeted during the invasion of the corrupt ants. Scribes would be killed if they did not switch sides because they hold untold knowledge that the world does not know. The more Adrian knows about being a scribe, the more he wants to become one but Ernas also gave him a reminder. Although being a scribe is wonderful and it could make you powerful, the difficulty in becoming one would also be high. So if you want to be on a journey in becoming a scribe, be prepared for the hardships. Adrian is now seriously thinking about the benefits and the cost. Since he relies in magic, he should have great benefits by becoming a scribe. He could opt for other easier sub-jobs but the return would not be as great also. Adrian firmed his morale and told Ernas that he wants to become one. Ernas looked at Adrian's dedication and gave him a test instead because he does not want a lazy bum to degrade the name of scribes. Adrian was then presented a book and he got a quest from Ernas because of it. To Noel.N quest notification scribe qualification test Ernas wants to test you if you are compatible in becoming a scribe, one of the most difficult of professions. Prove to him that you could surpass his expectations and become a great scribe in the future. Clear conditions. Past Ernas test time limit. 8 hours to study the material before Ernas proceeds with the test. Quest reward. Master scribe Ernas will approve of you becoming a scribe. Ernas then told Adrian the things inside the book. The book is a beginner guide in all the languages and symbols used in magic for this world. There are other books that talks about the details of magic from different worlds but Ernas thought that this world's fundamental magic would be appropriate to test Adrian. Adrian took the book and went to a desk with a chair with a window view to see his soulbounds playing outside to give him a change of scenery so that studying would not become boring. Adrian did not think that even in game he would study. He just finished high school and took a hiatus from entering university because of his condition but he still did not predict that he would study in a game. He does believe in the saying that knowledge is power. He first started reading the first chapters of the book that talks about how magic is formed in this world and Adrian thought it was fascinating that the gods designed the worlds to bend to the will of the people given training but also limit the authorization of what they could control. And just like that many hours flew by. Chapter 45 Becoming an Apprentice You are listening at NovelFull.audio Adrian finally managed to memorize all the things in the book that was handed to him. He managed to finish the book within 7 hours and 18 minutes. His mother did say that if he actually studied well instead of playing games he could have gotten first place but Adrian managed to become third in class without much effort because he has good grasp on topics once he actually listens. Adrian learns by paying attention once and his brain deconstructs the thoughts so that the end result would be acceptable by his brain's logic. Each individual has different learning ability and technique which is why some people learn more through a lecture while others learn more through activities. Adrian and Marlon were called the nerd twins in school because they mostly talk about games, comics, manga and anime at school which is why some girls stay clear of them even though they are good looking. Adrian approached Ernas and asked him if he could take the test early and the latter nodded. Adrian was expecting a paper test but instead was given a visual test in which Ernas draws runes in the air using his mana and projections appeared when he drawn multiple runes in the air which astounded Adrian because he did not know that you could actually apply runes like that. Ernas told him that you could only affect the elements when you become a master scribe like him which means Adrian has a long way to go before he could attempt what Ernas is actually doing. Ernest finished drawing the runes and they turned into phantasmal objects and he then spoke. Please arrange the necessary words to the object you see that is being projected. You have 10 minutes to do so. Adrian then thought that it is basically matching type. 
he would match the enchantments to the object. He matched the defense enchantments to the armor. The offensive enchantments to the sword that is floating. Utility enchantments to the cape. It was rather easy once you could read the actual words. Adrian deciphered the runes without the help of the system which means he relied on the things that he read from the book which included the symbols and letter used in the universe of Pandemonium. Pandemonium was actually the only VR game right now that could accurately translate all languages in the world. The design team might have burned their eyebrows off to actually make a new language just for the game and translating every language and even dialects. Adrian was finished and told Ernest. Ernest did not even need to check the answers before he nodded his head and approved. He then tested Adrian on his memorization skills by writing a symbol and telling Adrian what the symbol is. The symbols were actually the letters of the alphabet that the runic age uses. There were only 15 symbols but each has an intricate design that could not mistake one from the other. Adrian was given a leeway by being able to get three wrong before he is gets a fail. Adrian passed the test but got two wrong because he got confused for a second. The last test was to draw a simple float spell in the paper talisman and let an object it is attached to float for three seconds. Ernest was certain that Adrian would fail this test because he designed this test to fail. He wanted Adrian to fail not because he did not want him as an apprentice but to teach Adrian that failure is not the end but just another chance to learn. He watched Adrian's first attempt and was astounded because a partial lift was observed when Adrian sticked the talisman on the brush. It seems Adrian has more of a talent in being a scribe than he initially thought. Adrian spent his remaining hour that was given to him as a time limit. Adrian was attempting to make the brush float for at least three seconds but was unable to. He managed to make the brush float for one second though. Adrian turned to Ernest expecting him to disqualify him but was shocked to hear that he passed instead. He bowed to Ernest as a sign of deep gratitude in accepting him as an apprentice. Player Equinox has successfully acquired the scribe, beginner, sub-job class. Unlocked the title, the first scribe, Ernest then gave Adrian the tools he could practice as a beginner scribe. Item. Beginner scribe brush tier. Uncommon effect. Plus 10% success rate for talisman inscriptions. Description. A brush made from the finest hair of a horse and a handle dot made of the finest wood that it was sourced from. Mana is used as ink instead of actual ink. Item. Normal talisman paper tier. Common description. Paper made to handle common to uncommon inscriptions written by a scribe otherwise it is just normal paper that could be used for ink writing. Consumable. Count. 100 item. Scribe's journal tier. Rare description. Used to write the findings of the scribe. Only the scribe who owns this journal could read what is written on it unless he authorized others to read its contents. Adrian once again thanked Ernest and told him he would try his best even though he would not be a full-time scribe. Ernest told him that a beginner scribe must be on adventures in order for them to experience the wonder of magic to be able to decipher it. Adrian was delighted by the facts that Ernest told him and he was only told to report back to him every so often or if he needed help and if he becomes an intermediate scribe. He was then given books about the symbols and languages. Luckily now that he was a scribe, he just needed the book in order to look up the contents. He unlocked the system language auto-translate as a passive. He asked Ernest how he could achieve the weapon mastery skill and Ernest told him that he could ask the chief of the security forces for that. He bid Ernest goodbye because he has to report to Askeler. On the way to Askeler, Adrian checked the new skills and title he managed to obtain. Skill Scribe's intuition effect. Able to grasp the language of other species by observing and reading their literature. Also adds the magic penetration effect for spells by 5%. Can also enhance magic by rewriting magic circles. Affected by the level of scribe mastery. Skill. Inscription creation effect. Enables the user to create inscriptions using the material that the scribe could use. Affected by the level of scribe mastery. 
Current Material That Could Be Used Paper Title The First Scribe Effect Doubles Proficiency for the Scribe Skills Increases the Success Rate for Talisman Creations by 20% He got two new skills by becoming a scribe. He would get new skills by becoming more proficient and leveling up the skills for the sub-job class. He also got a great title to accompany it. The beta testers did say that being the first in something gives great rewards and now he was living example of that. Now that he has a sub-job class, he went to Askeler to finally clear the quest he was given. The quest Growing Stronger 3 has been cleared, Ring of Power has been given as a quest reward, item. Ring of Power Tier Uncommon Effect Strength plus 15 The ring was just a plain ring made of a brown metal. Adrian still used the ring because he still has a ring slot available. Now that the chain quest Askeler given him has been finished, he went to look for the chief of security but was stopped by Askeler. It seems you managed to increase you blood purity brat. I will not ask you how you did it but since you are a promising talent. I should tell you how to become a greater demon. Askeler said. Quest notification awaken the persona Askeler wants you to become stronger so that you could rise to the top. He sees promise in you so do not fail him. Clear condition. Become a greater demon reward. Epic spatial magic skillbook requirements. A. Reach level 50 B. Condense your demos core C. Defeat enemies 5 levels higher than you, 100. Adrian accepted the quest because he would have a definite path to become a greater demon. Adrian asked Askeler what does the condensing of the Deimos core is but was only told to explore it by himself. Defeating higher level enemies would be difficult because of the level correction that occurs. Level correction decreases the damage you could deal to monsters that are higher level than you. It seems becoming a greater demon is no easy feat before Adrian said goodbye to Askeler, he asked him how could he go to towns or cities filled with humans. Dot Askeler then answered, I see. You also want to explore in human settlements. In that case why not learn the glamour spell? How could I gain the glamour spell then? Adrian asked. Ho ho it is really easy. You just need to imagine yourself without horns, runes and a different skin tone. You would not actually transform per se but you would only fool the other people's sense of perception towards you. You must be careful of sages who could pierce through the veil of the illusion because even they have an inkling of using origin magic. Nevertheless, the spell is useful. Askeler said. Then how could I teach the polymorph spell to my soul bounds? They are too eye-catching. I do not want unnecessary trouble heading my way. Adrian asked again. For magical creature-related matters, ask the grumpy old Pan. He knows stuff regarding your creatures. Askeler answered. Adrian thanked and bid farewell to Askeler when he was finished asking him. He must first acquire the weapon's mastery before he tackles the monster part of the job advancement quest. The road to becoming strong is a long arduous path. Chapter 46 Weapons Mastery You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Adrian walked for a while until he found someone on guard duty. Adrian asked her the directions of the barracks are and headed there with his entourage of eye catching creatures. Adrian walked through the town and caught the fancy of children, more specifically his soul bounds. The children could not control themselves to touch Sirius. It seems that Deimos' children are unafraid of monsters or Adrian's soulbounds are just too tame for them to feel threat. Adrian did not mind as long as Sirius is not bothered and it seems it likes the attention which he can feel from soul resonance. Adrian could feel the emotions of his soulbounds which is why he would be able to detect their emotions even if they do not show it. The children could not touch Canlayan and Sina is on top of Adrian's head which is why they are focused on Sirius. Adrian actually agrees with the children hugging Sirius because they show faces of satisfaction. He agrees that Sirius is like a giant wolf stuffed toy when you embrace him. Sirius fur is soft and silky and most of all it's warm. 
though the feeling did not last as their parents would collect them after a few seconds which saddened the children. The parents told Adrian an apology which he just answered with a smile. After a few more minutes of walking, Adrian could hear the grunts and could see some demos undergoing military training. It seems he has reached his destination. He could see that the soldiers are mostly diabolins and imps with a few jinns which makes sense since jinns are more attuned to using magic than the other two species of demos. Adrian could see that amidst the ones who are undergoing training is a diabolin that is a few inches bigger than the other ones and is overseeing the group of trainees. He is bulky and his muscles are big just like a wrestler's or bodybuilder's. His horns are like a crown decorating his head. He is shirtless but the runes in his upper body are like an intricate design of tribal tattoos and even emits a faint blue glow. His aura could be felt from where Adrian is standing and has an overbearing yet majestic pressure. His demeanor is that of a battle-hardened general that leads his battalions to victory. Adrian told his soulbounds to stay where they are and busy themselves with the food that Adrian brought out for them. As Adrian was getting closer to the Diablin overseer, he was getting nervous because of the pressure being emitted by the individual but he did not cower instead braved on. The Diablin noticed this and a smirk could be seen in his face. He purposefully tested Adrian when he noticed that Adrian was going to him. Since Adrian passed the test of the Diablin, he would willingly hear his request to a certain extent. Adrian managed to reach the front of the Diablin but his legs almost gave way but he managed to speak. Sir, I would like you to teach me the ways of weapons mastery because I want to be able to wield any weapon that my hand could touch. The Diablin then sized up Adrian again and gave a sigh before speaking. If that is your only request then that would not be difficult to approve but be warned that having weapons mastery will not lead you to the peak like others who focus on one weapon for all their life. Yet judging by what I observe, you want to be able to handle any situation with different tools rather than struggle with one weapon. The road in obtaining it will be difficult but I hope you have the guts to carry on with your ambition. I am Bronx, the chief of security forces for the Paradox Plains and an elder for our race. Meet me here in three hours for the start of our training, quest notification achieve weapons mastery I, link quest, Bronx the chief of security forces would personally oversee your training. Prove to him that you have the medal to become great. Meet him in the dedicated time for the start of your training. Clear condition. Come back in three hours and meet Bronx reward. Increase in intimacy with Bronx when Adrian accepted the quest, Bronx went on his way o the tent and told the trainees to rest for they would resume later. When Bronx was nowhere in sight Adrian slumped down on the ground and breathed a sigh of relief. He would log out for now because it was time for lunch since his mother notified him. He would return by the end of lunch and would start his training. Adrian logged in with five minutes to spare and Reed summoned his soulbounds and just told them to play around but not bother the other people. Adrian again went to Bronx and reported for the start of his training. Achieve Weapons Mastery I quest has been cleared. Achieve Weapons Mastery 2 has been added in the quest list. Quest Notification Achieve Weapons Mastery 2, Link Quest, Bronx would teach you the ways of the sword first. Clear Condition. Be able to win the spar with a trainee that Bronx has appointed. Reward. Level plus 1 Adrian was given a training sword. The sword's blade was dulled so that it would not inflict cuts when hit. Adrian was instructed to swing the sword a hundred times which Adrian thought it was easy but in reality was not. Adrian had to swing the training sword in a certain way for it to count which was counted by the system via his quest log. To make matters worse, Bronx cast a spell on Adrian so that his titles and skills would not activate which greatly weakened him in terms of strength and stamina. Adrian lost count of how many swings he did so that the official swing count would become a hundred but he managed to achieve it and fall down due to exhaustion. Bronx congratulated him for getting the swings right a hundred times albeit painstakingly with many mistakes. The next task was to teach Adrian how to parry with a sword effectively. Adrian must use the weight of his body and the sword to be able to use a proper parry. 
He learned to parry even when he was hit with exhaustion and his stamina bar was in the red but still strived. Bronx had to step in and stop the training for now and continue tomorrow which was good news for Adrian because he already reached 12 hours by the time his stamina bar hit red 10 times. Adrian bowed to Bronx and bid him farewell for the day. Adrian once again logged in with all the tips that Bronx gave him like having the proper posture and having the perfect timing. Adrian even ran simulations in his head before sleeping which led him to dream about the training. It seems that all the simulations he did had an effect and he managed to successfully parry one hit from Bronx. They continued until Adrian could parry three out of five hits. After the parry lesson, Adrian was told to rest for the next phase would be the sparring and if he managed to win they would continue with the next step of the training. Adrian then logged out to eat and do necessary bodily functions before re-logging and attempting the spar. Adrian then went to Bronx to proceed with the spar. He was greeted by another trainee from the grounds which was a diabolon but less bulky but with well-toned muscles. He looked just like Bronx but younger. He was then introduced by Bronx as his son named Onyx. Bronx said that he was the same age as Adrian and like him only recently started to train with the Corps. Despite joining the Corps recently, Adrian could feel the same pressure from Onyx that he could feel from Bronx. It seems that the sparring would not be easy. They both bowed to each other and sported a battle stance. Commenced the spar, Bronx's voice resounded throughout the training ground catching the attention of the trainees that was on a break. Adrian first observed his opponent before engaging since he first want to gauge his enemy and was more adept at counter-attacking rather than attacking head-on. As if reading Adrian's wavelength, Onyx started the attack first. Adrian tried to parry but was forced to step back because of the weight of Onyx's sword. Onyx did not wait for Adrian to recover his footing and lunged at him again. This time Onyx added more force to his strike and Adrian parried in an awkward posture and was forced to sit in the ground due to recoil but this did not deter Adrian from trying to stand up. He magnificently showed his will to fight but was beaten by Onyx and Adrian was deemed unable to continue because of the bruises in his body. Bronx said he could try again later and Onyx even encouraged him that even he needed to take Adrian seriously because of his fighting spirit. Adrian lay on the ground with his soul bounds approaching him and comforting him. Adrian once again run simulations in his head from the fight he took part and with a determination to at least land a strike on Onyx. Chapter 47 The training continues you are listening at novelfull.audio Adrian kept sparring with Onyx throughout the day and by the seventh spar of the day, he finally managed to hit him once. Adrian managed to hit him because he kept switching from an offensive and defensive battle stance in order to confuse his opponent. Adrian dodged what he deemed he could dodge and parried only the heavy blows so that he could prepare for the recoil. There are other summoners that could use weapons but would sacrifice using high-level magic because of the training needed. Adrian is only able to wield a sword because the base job for a player is the most flexible. Adrian knows that obtaining the passive skill weapons mastery would be difficult but he did not expect it to be this difficult. He is only in step 2 and the reward was still not the passive skill. The most difficult passive to obtain would be the weapons mastery skill because it provides a general buff on any type of weapon. Although the gloves do not have a damage modifier unlike normal weapons but he filed a ticket to the company that the gloves for summoners who rely on magic should have a damage modifier. It was not only Adrian who filed this report, even other summoners in the forum who chose the spell casting route did so. It was already difficult to have one main weapon, the amount for two main weapons would be a cost a normal user could not handle. The casual summoner players also agreed to this since even they want to level up the same way as other player professions and Atlas Incorporated listened. They released a statement that the hot dot fix for the damage modifier for the summoner gloves would be fixed next week which is why Adrian became more determined because his demi dot gauntlets is a growth type weapon which would have a higher damage modifier than normal. When Adrian managed to hit Onyx, Bronx clapped his hands and told Adrian that he won which dumbfounded Adrian. Adrian was about to speak up about it when a system prompt appeared in front of his face. Player Equinox has finished the quest Achieve Weapons Mastery 2, 
player Equinox has leveled up, Quest Achieve Weapons Mastery 3 has been added to the Quest Log, Quest Notification Achieve Weapons Mastery 3, Link Quest, Bronx has been pleased with your use of the sword and has deemed it necessary to conclude its training using the sword. Now he wants you to master another weapon. Clear Condition Be able to strike the moving dummy with the dagger about 5 times in a span of 2 seconds. Reward Level plus 1 When Adrian accepted the quest, Bronx approached him to further explain the quest. Adrian get a feeling that the win aspect of the quest was vague because Bronx only said he was to spar with his son. This made Adrian re-evaluate the details from quests rather than just blindly accepting every quest. Now that you know the basics of the sword, we must now move on to a shorter weapon. Bronx said while handing Adrian a pair of daggers. Bronx continued, now your next objective is to hit this practice dummy with your dagger about five times in a span of two seconds. With your agility you could achieve it if the target was stationary but it is different if the target is moving. I wish you luck. When Bronx was finished explaining, someone tapped Adrian's shoulder from the back which he reflexively turned his head. What Adrian saw baffled him, it was a wooden dummy that was moving like a human. It was even teasing Adrian and mocking him which made Adrian's forehead produce a bulge. Adrian kept his composure because he would not achieve his goal if he was overwhelmed by emotions of anger towards the dummy. Adrian knew that this dummy was made this way so that the core would not only be trained physically but also mentally. Adrian observed the dummy and tried to strike its shoulder but it suddenly evaded. Adrian tried multiple times with different strike patterns but the result was the same. The dummy managed to evade every strike like it has eyes on all parts of its body or it could read the every attack that comes from Adrian. He then changed what type of attacks he did after the third slashing motion he threw the one dagger. When Adrian threw the dagger, the dummy took a second to react and was hit in the elbow. It seems Adrian should minimize his movement in order to score a hit. Previously, he was using big swiping movements and now he tried to limit the swing to only minimal effective movements. He was not successful at first but he adapted rather quickly at least from Bronx's perspective. The reason Adrian was able to adapt quickly is that he has practice with using the enlarged gauntlet form of his weapon. Although not the same size and shape the reach is almost the same and also the weight. It did not take long for Adrian to hit the dummy with three consecutive hits in two seconds. He was happy that he managed to do it but it was not enough. The day ended with Adrian consuming his stamina to the limit that he had to take damage because of pushing the limits. Bronx told Adrian to continue again tomorrow to which Adrian agreed because he was already exhausted beyond measure. When he exited the game pod, he went to his wheelchair and went straight to the bed. He was mentally exhausted and it showed by him falling asleep as soon as he went to the bed. He did not even did his usual battle simulation but he had an idea to do the mission. The next morning after breakfast, Adrian logged in and proceeded directly in attacking the dummy and wasted no time to test his theory on how the dummy functions. After a couple of bouts, he finally learned on how the dummy functions. The dummy responds to the vibrations produced by the air. If Adrian produced small vibrations, it would take time for it to register but if he produced bigger vibrations, the dummy would easily pick it up. It can also only pick one source of vibration at a time which is why it could not dodge the daggers when it was hurled towards it. Adrian put his plan into action. He threw the dagger in his left hand towards the dummy and dashed toward the dummy and initiated a slash using his right hand. The dummy evaded to the path that Adrian dictated and was hit by the dagger he threw and it lodged in the dummy's shoulder. Adrian used this chance to quickly grab the dummy and place his arm around its neck and stab it four times. He enacted this technique quickly and Bronx who was observing was pleased because usually the trainees would either give up or take 10 days to succeed. Adrian then heard a system prompt and read it before dropping to the ground seemingly exhausted by the use of intense concentration with probably a kick of adrenaline in the mix. Player Equinox has completed the Quest Achieve Weapons Mastery 3, Player Equinox has leveled up, the Quest Achieve Weapons Mastery 4 has been added to the Quest Log.
Quest Notification Achieve Weapons Mastery 4, Link Quest, Bronx is happy with your persistence and talent. There are only two more type of weapons left before you acquire the Weapons Mastery skill. Do not disappoint him clear condition. Learn how to handle a long spear. Reward. Level plus one, congratulations on passing the test, young lad. Now that you know how to handle a weapon with short reach. You must now know how to handle a weapon like this. Bronk said while handing the spear to Adrian. I would personally teach you this time on how to be able to wield a long reach weapon effectively. From your stance, weight distribution and attack patterns. Listen well for I will give you these tips so that you would be able to handle any weapon that has long reaches like the spear. Adrian then copied the movement of Bronx and was amazed because the movements are akin to that of a dance and he was mesmerized by the graceful yet powerful force to it. Adrian was part of the dance clubs when he was in elementary but did not in high school because he was engrossed in games. His former love for dancing has now been ignited and by a game, mind you. Adrian thought it was funny that what he loves now could ignite his passion for what he loves before. It was already the end of the day when Adrian heard a system prompt. Player Equinox has completed the quest Achieve Weapons Mastery 4, Player Equinox has leveled up, the quest Achieve Weapons Mastery Final has been added to the quest log. Quest Notification. Achieve Weapons Mastery Final Bronx is proud of what you achieved and is now teaching you the ways of the bow and arrow. Listen to him carefully in order to learn the necessary knowledge in handling the bow and arrow. Clear condition. Aim for the bullseye and hit it at least five times. Reward. Weapons mastery skill, finally, the quest would be finished and I would be able to acquire the skill. Just a little more, Adrian thought to himself. We would start training tomorrow. You must have been tired today. Bronk said as he told Adrian that to go rest. Chapter 48 Glamour You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Adrian arrived at the training grounds the next day and met with Bronx. He was handed a bow and arrow with a common rating. There he saw five targets with different ranges. The range of each target is spaced 10 meters apart with 10 meters as the closest and 50 meters as the farthest. It seems that hit the target's bullseye five times means hit the bullseye for each target with different ranges. The game Pandemonium gives freedom for the players not only in adventure but also the interpretation in quests. There were ramblings in the forum about some quests having underlying meanings and hidden objectives which would not only increase the reward but also the overall experience in the quest. This was true for story-bound quests that changes depending on the choices of the quest holder. Even small quest could lead to a destruction of a village which was apparent when Ranker player posted his recording of his quest which led to the revitalization of a wicked sorcerer. Using a bow is not all about having the perfect aim but is the unison of strength and precision. You must be able to properly pull the bowstring so that the arrow could fly straight properly and would have enough strength to pierce the enemy. First, follow my movements and try to shoot the 10 meter target first. Bronx said. Adrian tried to copy Bronx's posture but was only able to hit the farthest side of the target. It was as expected that it was still difficult for Adrian which is why every time he pulls the bowstring Bronx would ask him to hold his form first and Bronx would correct Adrian's posture. This routine was made until Adrian instinctively arrived at the posture when firing an arrow. Adrian managed to hit the bullseye for the 10 meter target in about 20 tries. The 20 meter target in about 45 tries and the 30 meter target in under 30 tries because he is finally getting used to it. He took a break before attempting the last two targets because his arm was already straining. He tried hitting the bullseye again if it would trigger the condition but it did not. He would have to hit the bullseye of the five different targets to finish the quest. Adrian then continued targeting the last two targets and managed to clear the quest after hundreds of tries. It seems the difficulty shot up exponentially for targets that are farther but he managed to clear the quest. Player Equinox has cleared the quest Achieve Weapons Mastery Final. Congratulations for clearing the linked quest. Player Equinox has obtained the Weapon Mastery Passive Skill. 
all the restrictions placed on player equinox would now be lifted. Skills and title effects would now be effective once more. Player Equinox has been rewarded with all stats plus 5 for undergoing the training, Player Equinox has been given the title, Deimos Reserve Soldier, Skill. Weapons Mastery Effect Boosts the damage done by any type of weapon by 5%. Increase all weapon skills by 10%. Cooldown Passive Title Deimos Reserve Soldier Effect Able to get quests provided by the Security Corps Gives 10% stat boost when fighting with the Deimos Security Corps. Now that Adrian obtained the weapon's mastery skill, he then asked Bronx on how the glamour skill could be obtained since the members of the Security Corps are usually the one who uses the skill because they are the ones who tend to go outside the most. I see that you want to learn it so that you could venture outside and be able to learn from the culture of other races. Obtaining it is not that difficult. You only have to visualize yourself in an appearance you desire. Glamour is more of a camouflage than a transformation since it only hides or changes the perception of people to you. Physically, you can look without horns but when you touch that part of your body, it is still present. It deceives the senses of people but it could be found out if you are not careful which is why do not let others touch your head which has your horns. Practice there in the room there for that room contains a mirror. I wish you luck on your future endeavor. Bronx said and bid Adrian goodbye. Adrian went inside the room and first tried visualizing his arm turning to that of his previous human avatar. He could see that his whole arm was turning to his previous human avatar. He then tried to do all of his body but he started sweating because it took all his concentration in an instant to visualize him turning into his previous human avatar. After a couple of failed attempts, Adrian managed to do his full body which of course did not include the clothes and weapon yet he did not obtain the skill. He then tried walking but broke his concentration which cancelled the effect. I think I must be at least be able to walk for it to trigger that I receive the skill. Adrian thought there are three ways for skills to be acquired which are through skill books, skill creation and finding a teacher. The method Adrian is doing now is skill creation which takes some time and effort because he has to recreate the skill from scratch and wait for the system to validate his skill creation. Adrian was on the point of giving up when he heard a prompt. Player Equinox has managed to create the active skill, Glamour, Skill. Glamour Tier. Rare Effect. Conceals the true image of the user from the perspective of others. It does not transform the user to the image he has visualized but changes the perception of others of your image. The effect of the skill would be broken if the user goes below 5% health. Cool down. 20 minutes cast time. Instant mana consumed. 200 MP Adrian finally sighed with relief and looked at the remaining log in hours and there was still 10 minutes left but he already logged out because of the mental fatigue. Before he went to bed, he contacted his best friend. Marlon could you like help me with a quest for my job class advancement? Adrian asked. Sure, what level are you now? I am currently level 45. Marlon answered. I am still level 20 because I had to acquire some other requirements for the job class advancement, Adrian said. That is still pretty fast considering you only started two weeks ago. Marlon said praising. I may be level 20 but my soul bounds are a level lower than mine. I still have to do something before we proceed in killing the silver more banshee, Adrian said while he remembered that he have to acquire the polymorph skill for his soul bounds. He would only show Marlon his soul bounds not the whole world because he does not want to be hounded by other guilds. Adrian wants to explore some of the worlds in pandemonium before joining or maybe creating a guild. Okay, sure. Just tell me when we would attempt the dungeon. I would be your faithful bus. I mean what are best friends for? Marlon said but it made Adrian laugh. Adrian thanked Marlon and said that he will talk to him again later. Adrian was now ready for bed. Equals 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 equals
a certain group headed by a famous explorer with a player name of Jones managed to acquire a map that had horrific drawings. They did not heed the warnings that was depicted on the map because they think that it was only a game and it would not affect them anyway because Jones only bought the map for five bronze coins. He managed to acquire some help from the top guilds by borrowing some of their members because the treasure location was in a zone with level 150 monsters. The general player base is only at the hundreds level and only the top guild are about level 140s to 150s range. Now, with the level rankings finally revealed with Hoi Wei with a level of 167. There are also rankings per class which is based on the base job classes. The members that are accompanying Jones are not the core members of the top guild but was still pro gamers that could work together to bring down monsters that are in the range of 150 to 170. Unfortunately, this time the goddess of victory did not smile upon them. When they entered the cave called the Forbidden Cavern, they lost a member every hour. From the 50 that accompanied Jones, only 10 were left which were the leader of each platoon. When they reached the boss room, they were greeted by a boss that was so strong that they were wiped out before dealing as much as a thousand damage. The boss was riding a pale horse with a corrosive breath. The boss has a grotesque appearance that would even scare ghosts because it has tumors all over its body. Some pulsating while some popped and oozed a green liquid. The boss name was in gold which signifies that it was a boss monster that grows in level in accordance to the player base and it was a glorified raid boss. Monster. Plague, Fourth Horseman of the Apocalypse, Level. 200 HP, 99.99% per 100% description. When the raid team was beaten a world message was then heard. The Fourth Horseman of the Apocalypse has been awoken. Unexpected diseases would hit countries. New diseases without a cure would be born. The life expectancy of the inhabitants of this world has been decreased by five years. Chapter 49 Polymorph and Blending in You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Adrian went to Pan to inquire on how to be able to change his soulbound's appearance. When he reached Pan's residence, he was tending to his own creatures outside. Pan recognized Adrian but did not spare him another glance. Adrian seemed to sense that Pan was not paying him attention so he proceeded to ask the old man anyway. Old man Pan could I ask you something? Adrian asked. Can't you see that I am pretty busy right now, Pan answered crankily. Your body might be busy but your mouth isn't. Adrian murmured. What did you say you brat? Pan said angrily. Dot. Uh, that I said that you mm. Do you have a way for soulbound monsters to appear smaller? Out of combat, I mean. Adrian said nervously. I do have an idea, but why should I tell you? Pan said with a cranky tone. If you tell me, I would not bother you any more. How about that? Adrian said with confidence. After Adrian said that, Cena landed on his head again, but before Adrian could grab her, she was already in Pan's hands. Ooh dot what's this creature? I have not seen it before. Could it be an endangered species? It has an aura unlike ordinary creatures. Brat, where did you get this magnificent creature? Pan asked while examining Sina which the latter was a bit uncomfortable. Adrian took back Sina and calmed it down before he answered Pan. I summoned her using a mythical soul stone. Adrian said in a flat tone. I see. Since you showed me something interesting brat. I would answer your question. Here is a polymorph skill book. This could solve your problems as long as you learn the skill. Pan said while he showed the skill book to Adrian. Adrian was about to reach for the skill book when Pan hid the skill book again. I just showed you the way. I did not say it was for free. Pan snickered. Adrian controlled his temper before he asked Pan. How much? One hundred gold, Pan answered. That's robbery. A skill book that cost a hundred gold are already epic skill books plus I only have one hundred gold left in my pocket. And what are you going to use the money for anyway? You are pretty self-sufficient. Adrian retorted. 
If you come to me every time you encounter a fascinating monster and every so often respond to my commissions then I would only sell it to you for ten gold coins. Pan said. Adrian thought about Pan's offer. It seems Pan is really a creature enthusiast like what the other residents say he is. Also, commissions by Pan will surely be good considering he was the most famous breeder here in the area. Adrian nodded with Pan's offer and he was given a token with a rune embedded in it. Pan said that it would light up when he needs Adrian for something and he was told to come immediately if he could because he did not want to be kept waiting. Adrian paid ten gold coins to Pan and immediately learned the skillbook. Skill Polymorph, out of combat version, tier Uncommon effect Changes of transforms the appearance of a selected individual only works on willing targets. Dispelled when the polymorphed individual initiates combat or takes damage. Cooldown. 10 minutes cast time. Instant but total transformation takes 5 seconds. Mana consumed. 100 MP item. Pan's token tier. Epic durability. 500 slash 500 effect. A token given to individuals that Pan has interest in. Pan's token will glow when he needs the wielder of the token to do jobs for him. Description A pentagon-shaped token with Pan's name written as a rune. It is made of black iron and a mixture of other metals. Adrian then said goodbye to Pan and contacted Marlin whose in-game name was Levin Cloud to meet him near the Ambrosia Forest where the Silver Moor is close to. Marlon then replied that he would meet him in an hour. Adrian then went to the portal area to find the way to Ambrosia Forest and was not met with luck because the nearest possible portal location would be near Ro. E City which is an elven settlement. He then went first to Askeler to tell him that he would be out of the plains for a while. He then gave Adrian a warning that if his cover gets blown and is captured that it is okay to lead his captors to a nearby portal because he could escape using the portal with the consequence that the portal would be closed until it is proven that it could be opened again. Askeler said that though mages have no capacity to enter the portals, there may be individuals that could find a way to our pocket dimension. Some nations do consider us a commodity. Adrian heeded the warnings and ventured off knowing that he could get captured by NPCs if he was not mindful of his surroundings. There is a concept of prison in this game which is why he should be careful. Adrian then set the Paradox Plains as his resurrection point if he ever gets killed. Adrian then used the skill Polymorph on his soulbound Sirius and Canlayan. Sirius became small and cute and he looked like a baby Siberian husky with only black fur. Canlayan looked like a chibi version of himself that has a larger head instead of a longer body. He looked like a red dragon stuffed toy that is sold to little kids. He became two feet long with his head being one foot and his body the remaining size. He did look rare but he became cute which would deter persons interested in combat to glance at him. Players who are girls would be attracted to Canlayan though but Adrian could not think of any other form. Adrian then cast Glamour on himself to change the perception of other through him before he went inside the portal slash fracture. Equals 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 Marlin aka Levin Cloud was already waiting at the entrance to Ambrosia Forest. Adrian told him that he has arrived in Roe.e city and would take about five minutes to reach his location. Marlon was happy that he could go on adventure with his best friend because he rarely goes out now because of the result of the accident. He would support his best friend both in real life and inside the game. Equals 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 Adrian appeared in a hidden empty alleyway inside the city. It was not that bustling because there are only a few hunting ground near the city but it was still a city. Adrian walked out of the alleyway and into the street to find the south gate which is where the entrance to Ambrosia Forest is. Adrian did not attract much attention from male players but did so with female players because he was accompanied by cute summons. 
Female summoners even asked him where he obtained them but he answered that he was on a tight schedule and could not spare time to answer their queries. He was also getting death stares from some male players because he was attracting attention of the female players but they did not cause a ruckus because of Adrian's player name was in white which signified that he was not legally an adult and if they get reported they could have their accounts banned or worse deleted. Adult players who harass underage users would be subjected to strict disciplinary action and would even pay a fine. Underage players would also be protected by the system and would forcibly log out anyone that would do illegal stuff to them. The underage user would also be logged out so that they would not develop a trauma of the incident. There were some who tested the limits of the system and were fined and was rumored that they were still paying the fees till this day. You could say that the game pandemonium has strict standards when it comes to the well-being of users which is why it has a high approval rates compared to other VRM MOs. It did not take long for Adrian to see his best friend's player name and greeted him. Yo. You really did choose an elf. I thought you were joking but you were not. Adrian said happily. And it seems you really are a summoner but why do your summons look too cute? Are they viable in battle? Marlon said jokingly. You would be surprised. Adrian said while containing his laugh. Well, if you say so. Should we take the safe route and avoid the monsters or the shorter route with monsters? Marlon asked. Adrian hesitated at first but chose the safe route because he did not want the polymorph to dispel and be seen. He would show his best friend his soul bounds first in a dungeon without the prying eyes of the public. He should at least be considerate of his best friend that cancelled his game plans to accompany him. Player Levin Cloud invited you to be a member of his party, best friend's bus ride. Would you like to join? Yes or no? Adrian laughed at the name of the party but still joined anyway. Now, their adventure begins. Chapter 50 the Road to the Silver Moors you are listening at NovelFull.audio As Adrian and Marlon were walking through the trail, they were discussing things about their adventures but mainly Marlon's adventures because Adrian was still relatively new to the game. I have been dying to know about the details about your job class. You said the reason you could not level up a lot was because of the job class requirements. Tell me, please. Also did you get a sub-job class? If so tell me about that too. Adrian asked. Their conversation was only heard by the two of them because they were using the party voice channel instead of speaking openly. Marlon then cheerfully replied, I did not get a sub-class yet because priests already have too much on their plate. We have to like spread the religion or do charity works to build up our devotion stat which cannot be allocated skill points. You are quite lucky that your job class and others do not have this stat because it takes forever just to increase it by a hundred. The benefit is it empowers the spells that we use which is useful at a later part in the game. We should be able to level up quicker until level 100. I hear that leveling up to level 200 is the real grind. Adrian then asked again, you still have nit answered what job class you are. I could tell you mine first then. After killing the Banshee, I could advance into a hidden class called Soul Summoner which is a never before heard job class. I getting so excited to try it. It was worth not being a rune swordsman for this. Marlon remembered that Adrian usually plays classes that has good mobility which is versatile. He likes high difficulty play styles because he not would only look cool if he mastered it but also has much more fun with it. The Summoner job class was rated by Atlas Incorporated as 4.5 out of 5 star difficulty because it requires mastery of magic and coordination with the summons. Mages were 4 stars out of 5, priests and warriors were 3. 5 stars. Shamans were 3 stars and rangers were 4.1 star. The star rating changes depending on the job class advancement so it is only a viable rating for the base job classes. Marlon then puffed his chest and spoke, fine, I will tell you my awesome class. My class is also a hidden class called, Child of Gia. It is a special type of priest job that could wield both offensive and support magic. 
Unlike other priest job class advancements that only has support skills and about 5 low damage offensive skills, my job class could freely wield any number of offensive spells as long as the elemental attribute is the same as the one I have chosen. So what attribute did you choose then? Adrian asked sincerely. Why earth of course? I am an elf after all. Marlon said proudly. I see. You chose earth attribute so you could wield plant magic when you are high leveled. Still, it's a shame. I could have given you this skill book if you had chosen the water element. Adrian said while Marlon was still gazing at the insane damage multiplier of the skill book. Item. Abyss Dragon Breath, Degraded, Skill Book Tier. Epic Conditions. Magic Job Class Effect. Fires a concentrated beam of cold energy in a straight line of damaging enemies for 500% of magic damage. Induces frostbite for mage classes specialized in ice magic. Mana. 1500 MP chant. 10 seconds cooldown. 2 hours Marlin took a minute before he could speak again and finally asked Adrian where he got it. I got it from an instance dungeon that I chanced upon entering. Since you could not use it, I would just sell it then. I would sell it in a month perhaps since not a lot of players could use it yet. Adrian said like it was normal. Marlin was dumbfounded then asked, why do you not want to use it then? Summoners could use magic or do not tell me that you chose a different elemental attribute but I know that summoners could use any elemental magic even if they choose to prioritize one. It would not be as potent as your chosen attribute but you could still use it. Adrian then decided to tell Marlon some truth about his situation. I actually have a different element that inhibits me from learning elemental magic. I could only use origin magic. Adrian answered. Marlon's eyes sparkled with amazement and said, Whoa. You discovered a new magic element. Awesome. Tell me what does it do? Origin magic is basically magic that deals with reality or in layman's term. Time and space. Also before you ask, I do not have much spells at my disposal since I am still low leveled. Adrian answered. They chatted along the way about their upcoming strategy and minor details. Equals 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 Good day everyone. This is Pandemo News. Your guide to all things pandemonium. I, Paula, would be your anchor for today about what is currently happening in pandemonium. Our team managed to get a scoop that the main members of the top themselves have formed a raid group to defeat the fourth horseman of the apocalypse but was unfortunate because the horseman was no longer present at the location. Currently, new sicknesses have been discovered which is why the sub-jobs such as herbalist and doctor are hot right now. There were even monarchs that were affected which if a player heals them they could be appointed with a kingdom-related title. In other news, no one still has uncovered the identity of the player of the world message. Even Atlas Incorporated are tight-lipped about it. If you are the person who triggered the world message, come to our office and we could offer you a broadcasting deal. That's it for our Flash News segment of the day. See you in Pandemonium. Equals 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 it did not take long for Adrian and Marlon to get to the location of the dungeon. The road they had been taking changed scenery about 15 minutes ago. The normal looking forest road was now darker in color and light could barely pierce through the thick overgrowth of the trees. The lush green trees are now either dark brown in color or dead. The ominous atmosphere could very well be used in horror movies because of the dreadful feeling that is in this woods. The duo managed to reach the entrance of the dungeon. The entrance looked like an arc made by the dead trees and in the middle was not a door but a dark hole that looks like it absorbs all light. The Silvermoor dungeon is famous for its dungeon mobs that barely drop useful loot because usually it was tree monsters and mud golems. 
The boss was a banshee which was a type of witch that not only has sonic attacks but also has curses that it uses on the intruders of its domain. Priests are necessary for this dungeon because of their skill, purify, yet the banshee was not a type of undead which is why it is not famous with priests because they could not deal much damage to the boss monster. Also with the dreary atmosphere, the dungeon was not famous to people who are easily frightened. The only players who enter this dungeon were players that have unconditional quests related to this dungeon. For Adrian, this dungeon was ideal because he could train his soulbounds here since the monsters have probably accumulated. The duo both checked their gears and potions before heading inside the dungeon. When they were sure that everything was set, they ventured in without a shred of hesitation but little did they know that a dark mist entered with them. Equals 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 the duo was already inside the dungeon and noticed that the dungeon was like a swamp. There was nothing silver related inside of it which is why the duo found it odd because it was named Silver Moors. Not long after, the dead trees started moving and transforming into humanoid shapes. Faces even started appearing in their tree barks which would frighten players if they did not think this was a game. The faces of the trees were either sad looking or had a face of someone wailing. Monster. Cursed Treant Level. 23 HP 100 000 100 100 100%. Description. Tray ants that lived in the silver moors that was cursed by the banshee that lives there. Now they are not like gentle protectors of the forests they once were but blood-hungry trees with an appetite for human flesh. Adrian and Marlin prepared for combat when they suddenly heard an ear-piercing yell. Aha! The duo both wondered why would the banshee cry out so early and at the start of the dungeon. They both became afraid and thoughts went into their heads. They both fervently wished that the reason they imagined did not come to fruition.